Maintaining your weight loss is probably the tougher thing, but it doesn't get that much attention. Being able to have the grit, to have the endurance to maintain a lifestyle is grossly underrated. Like that takes some serious stamina. Okay? And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I know what it takes. I've been there. Okay, I lost 100 pounds. I've kept it off for 11 years. I know what it's like and I know it's hard. And when you look at fasting, it really makes you wonder if there's a right way or a wrong way to continue fasting. Like, should you be combining fasting with low carb keto? Or should you be combining fasting with carbs for optimal sort of maintenance? Well, let's break it down because there's some interesting data that we should look at. There's two very important pieces that we have to address. Okay? And I've covered this in another video before, but I wanted to do a deep dive on it here. The two pieces are resting metabolic rate, like how many calories we burn at rest, because that's very important for keeping weight off. But the other one, and arguably the even bigger piece, is the emotional piece. If we feel like we're constantly deprived, we're not going to be able to sustain that lifestyle. Okay? There's something that we say in a lot of like the high performance groups that I educate in, and that is, you will never rise to the occasion. You will always default to the lowest level of training. Okay, what that means in like a performance setting is once the crud hits the fan, so to speak, you tend to just default to your lowest level of training. You rise to the occasion when it's convenient for you, but when it's stressful, you default. So when you're maintaining, the moment that things get really stressful, if it hasn't become a complete pattern norm for you, you're going to bounce back off. It happened to me for years and it took reforming new habits. And I could do a whole separate video on the emotional side. In fact, if you want me to, comment down below. I'm happy to talk about that whole motivational piece. When should you combine keto with fasting and when should you combine fasting with carbs? The short answer is alternate them, okay? Alternate them because we need to satisfy both of those categories. First, let's talk about the metabolism piece. The ketogenic diet or a low carb diet provides more mitochondrial mass within what is called the brown fat tissue, meaning you dissipate more energy as heat. So just sitting there, you're like a little space heater that's just burning calories. Okay, but I will tell you from experience, I didn't wanna continue just eating bacon, cheese, eggs, broccoli, spinach for 11 years. I wanted to have some carbs. And even though I was getting more of like the basal metabolic rate being elevated that could keep the weight off easier, I still needed to alternate. So what I would typically recommend you do for maintenance is go one month with keto and fasting and one month with carbs and fasting. When you're fasting, you do wanna keep yourself kind of satiated because it's very important that during your fasting periods, you are getting the benefit of fat adaptation even when you're having carbs, okay? So one of the things that I would recommend is I put a link down below for Peak Tea Crystals. They have a cinnamon tea, like an herbal cinnamon fasting tea. That is one of my personal favorites when I'm fasting, especially with carbs, because when I'm fasting, I do want to have cinnamon coming in if I'm going to have carbs. There's some potential evidence that cinnamon may help with good carbohydrate metabolism. So that works really, really well. So I sip on that in the afternoon. It seems to make a big difference. I did go ahead and put a link. They are a sponsor of today's video, full disclaimer, but that link down below will save you 5% off of any Peak Tea Crystal flavor. So it's micro-filtered, cold-filtered, so are these special crystals that are really cool that dissolve really well and mix really thoroughly so you're not getting clumps and things like that. And a lot of times you can mix them with hot water or cold water. So if you wanna have iced tea or you wanna have hot tea. So again, that link is down below and this is a very exclusive discount. They don't do discounts for practically anything. So it's 5% off if you use that link down below in the description. So fasting with carbohydrates, here's the thing that we have to remember. Anytime that you reduce your calories, you're going to lessen your metabolic rate. Okay, so this applies in all cases. Anyone that loses weight, your metabolism shrinks. It goes down. And there's old studies that I've referenced to, to the nth degree talking about the biggest loser contestants. Like when they went back and they checked on them six years later, their metabolisms were still depressed after losing all that weight. That's a problem, right? So one of the things you have to pay attention to the most is making sure you get enough calories in when you are eating. During your one month of combining fasting and keto, 
That's pretty easy to do because candidly, it's easy to get calories in on keto, even during a small compressed eating window. Okay, nine calories per gram for fat, four calories per gram for carbs, right? So when you're eating predominantly fats and protein, it's not hard to get to two or 3,000 calories. It's just not. A handful of macadamia nuts is gonna get you a few hundred. It's that easy, right? It can also be a problem. So when you're keto fasting, I would really only recommend fasting maybe like, I don't know, three, maybe four days per week, okay? And still monitor your calories. But on the months where you're doing fasting combined with carbs, you really do wanna make sure that you're getting enough calories in. Think about it. You're used to doing keto fasting, so you're used to having like a small stomach because you're getting a lot of energy density. You don't need much food to get you the calories, right? But with carb fasting, you have significantly more volume of food with less calories. So you're gonna fill up quicker. And next thing you know, you're like, wow, I actually only ate 1200 calories on this fasting day. We do not wanna run into that, okay? We're not trying to utilize carb fasting as a means to reduce calories. That's not the goal. We're trying to utilize carb fasting as a means to satisfy and pacify the sort of emotional need for carbs that we sometimes feel we need. Not to mention multiple physiological needs too. Like it's nice to switch off back and forth because it can help kind of connect that tryptophan cycle again, help restore sleep if you start feeling like your sleep is off. It's just a good long-term maintenance plan. So what I would recommend is yes, get your carbs in, but don't overdo it and then towards the end of your eating period, bring the fats back in so the calories get up. Your amount of calories that you should take in on a carb fasting day should be similar to the amount you would take in on a keto fasting day. Don't be fooled just because there's carbs in the equation does not mean that you need to eat drastically less. We need to get out of this whole demonization of carbs mentality and realize that they have a place and use them to satisfy the emotional desire you have for carbs so that you can continue to do this for a long time. The cool thing is the fasting is really offsetting a lot of the negative aspect of carbs, okay? It really is. By adding the fasting combined with the carbs, you're really ending up at net neutral. So then you're getting the kind of the keto fasting component that's keeping that brown fat activation, resting metabolic rate nice and high, but then you're also getting the leptin restoration and the mental satisfaction you need from the carb fasting. So one month of keto fasting, one month of carb fasting, both are gonna be three to four days per week within each category, and make sure your calories are equal. You don't need to be continually putting yourself in a deficit you can do so as needed. It's maintenance. It's not continual weight loss. Otherwise, you will continue to crush your metabolism and you're gonna set yourself back. Trust me, it's the best thing I ever did was not reduce my calories too drastically after I already got to my goal weight. I'll see you tomorrow.